Alright guys, so I know it's been a while since I posted anything and I'm sorry about that, but I moved and so I've been a little busy. Um, but today I'm going to share with you guys the story of when I got skin cancer. So it was five years ago. Um, I noticed that I had a circular type growth on my neck and I thought that it was an allergic reaction because I wore a lot of fake jewelry, you know, costume jewelry. Um, it was very itchy at first because the skin was just so irritated. Um, and at first it almost seemed like a little crusty and so I thought, oh, like it's an allergic reaction, it'll go away, and then it didn't. And then it kind of started turning into a circle and I thought maybe it was a wart or I don't know, I, I didn't know what it was, but I thought it was nothing really. But it didn't go away, and it started to actually kind of hurt. Not like super painful, but like sensitive. And it got this kind of shiny skin on the edge of it that was really sensitive. And so I started putting Neosporin and band-aids on it trying to get rid of it and it wasn't working um, I will admit that I did things that I shouldn't have I you know was picking at it and I was trying to get the crusty surface off and I was putting ointments on it and anything I could to get rid of it and it wasn't going away so I went to the doctor and at first well, the first doctor I went to thought that it was a, a bacterial growth and she gave me ointment and that ointment made it more itchy and more sensitive and it felt awful and so I went back to that doctor and told her and she was like okay I think we need to just remove this and I was like yeah okay I'm I'm in let's do it so I went in and she you know cut into me um, and kind of dug into it and it was not a fun process and then she put stitches on it and sent me on my way and a few days later it was really really irritated and I was keeping a close eye on it and I was putting I wasn't putting anything on it at that point and I was putting um, band-aids just to keep it you know covered at night because the stitches and all that and then during the day I would air it out and I noticed that it was really 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 red like dark red and it was so itchy and I believe it was three days after I got that procedure done I actually popped my stitches my growth reopened and pulled the stitches out and it was painful and um, so I had to go back and they said oh you didn't pop your stitch it's just healing and I was like no you can clearly see and I'll show you the pictures so you can clearly see that I had popped a stitch so anyways I go back to get the stitches out she takes the stitches out which also was not fun and she the thing is back you know it, it looks exactly like it did before only way more irritated now and so she tells me we need to get these biopsy results because what she had removed she sent off to be biopsied biopsy comes back and it's basal cell carcinoma so that's a type of skin cancer and it's not gone. 
she had only removed the center of the circular mass, which was nothing. It was literally just enough to biopsy, and that wasn't the point of the procedure. It was not just a biopsy procedure. She was actually supposed to remove it, and that didn't happen. And she said, look, I'm not a dermatologist. I don't feel comfortable treating this. You need to go see a dermatologist. So I went and saw a dermatologist, <laughs> and she was like, yeah, definitely looks like skin cancer. We need to biopsy it. And I was like, we already biopsied it. I'm not going through this thing again. I just want it gone. So she gets the biopsy results from the last place and agrees to go ahead and just remove it. So I have to make an appointment and go back and get that done. So now I'm going to tell you about the actual procedure. I went to a very good dermatologist. She was amazing. They numb the area with this frozen roller. Okay. And it like numbs your skin to the touch. And then they inject topical numbing agent. Um, I believe it was lidocaine. I'm not hundred percent sure, but they used a topical numbing agent and I could still feel it, but that was just because my EDS, I'm intolerant to those things. It wasn't that bad, but she was really concerned that I could still feel everything. So I ended up getting seven shots of topical numbing cream or injection. Um, and then they began to cut. It is a very strange feeling. So they, because they used a lot of the numbing stuff I I did get numb on the skin um, but you feel the tugging like somebody's pulling on your skin and you feel the cutting and it's so weird because it's not painful but like it's cringy you know <laughs> like it it sounds like a serrated knife going through cardboard that like grindy gross sound in your body <laughs> like you can hear it you can feel it but like there's no audible noise it's just because it's it's in you on you 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 hear it and feel it um and it was over relatively quickly and she's like okay i think we removed all of the areas the borders and we're going to send it off and make sure that we got everything and we'll go from there. So they stitched me up. And again, this woman was incredible. They did internal stitches, which I don't know how you even do that, but she did so good. And then covered it up and sent me on my way so I wouldn't have to come back and get stitches out. At this time, I didn't have insurance and it was already expensive just to, you know, I had to pay for the other doctor's appointments and the other procedure. And then I had to come to her and just a visit with her was $200 and then the actual procedure I mean that could have cost me so much um, but she worked with me and and like I said she did the internal stitches so I wouldn't have to come back and go you know get stitches removed and pay for that and I wouldn't have to go back to her at all if I didn't want to I could go to a regular you know primary care doctor to get it looked at um, but I did end up going back to her after six months so that she could see how well it had healed. And I was very happy. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. There's a little line. And I'll also uh, post some pictures for you. There's, you know, when it started, when it was healing, and what it looked like after a while and then today where you can barely see it. Let me see if I can see it right there. See that line? But you can hardly tell anything was ever there and I think that's pretty incredible. So we talked about what had caused this. Basal cell carcinoma is usually caused from sun exposure. 
I am very fair skinned. I have freckles everywhere, obviously. So I'm really sensitive to sun and that could be why. But also because of my Ehlers Downlows, I am sensitive to pretty much anything. And I have very sensitive skin in general. So it very well could have been irritation and that my body chose to attack that irritation in this way. So we don't know for sure what caused it. But since then, I have had three other uh, precancerous spots removed from my arms. And I go to the dermatologist regularly, usually once a year, just to get a full body examination and make sure that I don't have any new spots. Try to get on top of it because I know that I'm so sensitive and because of my Ehlers Demos, I'm just more prone to these kinds of issues. So I go to get checked out and give myself some peace of mind. I highly suggest that you do the same if you have similar issues. And I also want to mention that my symptoms had been going on for months. Um, like I said, I, you know, brushed it off as anything but that I never ever would have thought skin cancer like at all. I thought that it was some kind of bacterial growth for sure. Um, it was not even in the realm of consideration for me, but now it has to be. And I highly suggest that if you are having a similar growth or any spot that you are unsure about, just go. Like don't second guess it because you never know how serious it is. And I'm not telling you to be a hypochondriac and like totally freak out, but like it's better to just find out and know for sure. Like it doesn't hurt. I should have gone way earlier than I did and maybe it wouldn't have been as big a growth as it was if I had gone earlier. I wouldn't have had to have so many issues if I had let it, you know, not let it go for so long. So I would definitely say to get things looked at if you aren't sure what it is or you're at all concerned with it. And I wear <laughs> face sunscreen pretty much every day. Like if I'm leaving the house, I wear sunscreen on my face and neck. And, uh, and then, and of course, in the summer, spring times when it's extra sunny outside, I wear all over sunscreen. I use at least 70 SPF and, you know, more if I can afford it. <laughs> the more SPF is usually more expensive, but I, you know, do my due diligence to make sure that I'm well protected. And again, I suggest you do the same. It is not something to you know, brush off. I was very young when this happened to me, you know, I was 29 years old. And while basal cell carcinoma is relatively benign, any kind of skin cancer is scary. I mean, just the word cancer is scary to most people and you don't want to mess around with that. So, you know, take these things seriously. And just because you don't have Ehlers Danlos like me or MCAS or something that makes you more prone to these things, I would still suggest that you be careful, do your diligence, and, you know, take things seriously. You know, just wear sunscreen. It's not that big of a deal, it's not the end of the world and it could keep you from getting skin cancer like I did. That's my story, you guys. <laughs> if you have any questions, please drop a comment and also hit the like button. And you can follow me on YouTube or you could also follow my blog, which is thatscrystal.wordpress.com. Thanks, guys.